What does it mean to rest? And how can we rest when there's so much to do? On this episode of Student Ministry Connection, I want to take a brief moment to share some of the things that I've learned over the past several years on the topic of rest, especially as it pertains to those of us in student ministry. Welcome to Student Ministry Connection, a podcast for those who serve in student ministry, want to connect, and desire to grow. My name is Steve Cullum, and I've served in student ministry since 1999. I'm currently serving as a missionary with National Network of Youth Ministries, where I get to serve youth leaders, unite the church, and reach teenagers for Christ. As this episode is being released, we have just begun a new year. 2024 is here, and I wanted to give you a bit of an idea on what you can expect from the podcast this year. I've been talking with a lot of you and gathering some of my own thoughts and came up with a list of ideas and themes that will play into many of the conversations that I'll have with guests and the topics that I'll talk about in my own solo episodes this year. We'll discuss what it looks like to focus on discipleship and pastoring over the big events in student ministry. We're going to talk about coaching and how you can receive free coaching training this year. We'll also talk about recovering from being fired, how to leave your ministry well, social media and AI, evangelism versus the invitation, helping students graduate well, and also focusing on the fruit that you produce as a youth leader. But as I mentioned earlier, I've been in student ministry since 1999, which means I've now reached the point in my life where I've been serving in student ministry longer than I haven't. And with over half my life dedicated to this ministry, I know how fulfilling it can be. But I also know how draining it can be sometimes, especially if we're not resting well. So at the start of this new year, I felt like it would be a good thing to discuss rest. But before we do that, let's pause and thank the sponsor of this episode. G-Shades is a youth ministry curriculum and teaching strategy focused on helping students see every life situation through the lens of the gospel. G-Shades has options to fit everyone with three plans to choose from. This curriculum gives you the resources that you need to do what you do better. Do you just need message outlines, a discussion guide, and a game? That's just over $200. Looking for a higher production value, including bumper videos, Instagram devotionals, and parent guides? That's just over $300. Or do you want an affordable, engaging video curriculum? G-Shades has you covered for just over $400. You will not find a youth ministry video curriculum at that price point anywhere else. There are lots of great curriculum options out there, but G-Shades is set apart because of their focus on the gospel. Every lesson focuses so much on Jesus and how to see the world and life situations through that lens of the gospel. You can also learn more about the creator, Mike Haynes, on episodes 32, 55, and 93 of this podcast. So head over to gshades.org, that's G-S-H-A-D-E-S dot O-R-G, to download Season 5 of G Shades Youth Ministry Curriculum. And be sure to use the promo code CONNECTION at checkout to save $20 off your order. G Shades, seeing life through the lens of the gospel. Thank you so much, G Shades, for sponsoring this episode. You can find the link to G Shades in the podcast show notes. I also want to take a moment to talk to you about the Orange Conference. It's one of my favorite conferences that I go to each year. I've been going for years and years. The Orange Conference 2024 will be April 23rd through April 25th at the Gas South Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. This is a three-day in-person and online event for kids ministry, youth ministry, and next-gen ministry leaders. For three incredible days, we're going to be unpacking the truth about volunteer culture and what it takes to keep showing up real tools to engage real families even if they don't attend your church, how to get everybody who is at your church to be here for the next generation, and yes, we'll even talk about AI, chat GBT, and whatever comes next. Main sessions include powerful worship, inspiring moments, and brand new ideas. You'll hear from main stage speakers like Kristen Ivey, John Acuff, Reggie Joyner, Joseph Sojourner, Leslie Mack, John Williams, Chinway Williams, and so many more. And you'll also have the opportunity to choose from over 60 workshops on specific ministry ideas and concepts that you do not want to miss. So if you want to join me at Orange Conference 2024, I've got a code to help you save 10% off your tickets. Just use OC24NNYM10. Again, that's OC 
N-N-Y-M, as in ministry, one, zero, and you'll be able to save 10% off your Orange Conference tickets. You can find the link to register and the discount code in the podcast show notes. Over the past several years, I've been trying to learn more and more about what it means to truly rest. It's something that I thought I should know by now, but the truth is that I still have a lot to learn in this area. I used to think that rest meant not working and sleeping more and distracting myself from everything that is around me just to focus in on nothing. But what I realized is I'm barely capable of doing that most days. In fact, I'm mostly incapable of shutting off completely. And what I ended up doing is just distracting myself or numbing out or zoning out. And it wasn't really restful. I've also struggled with this Sabbath idea, thinking that it has to be only filled with reading and prayer. But what if I don't feel like reading or prayer? I mean, I've been reading and praying all week long. I also thought I have to be totally alone with God, that it had to be just me. And every time I got distracted, it was messing up my quiet time or messing up my Sabbath. And I also thought that there's no way I could do something that I enjoyed during my Sabbath rest with God. But over time, God has taught me more and more about what Sabbath rest is all about. Before we jump into more of the idea of the Sabbath, I think it's also important to consider what we're saying yes to on a regular basis. Doug Fields and many others have taught me over the years that a yes to one thing is a no to many other things. So we need to be wise on what we're saying yes to. And if you have trouble saying no in the moment, you're not alone, first of all. But I want to suggest something that a friend of mine taught me several years ago called the 24-hour rule. When someone suggests something to you or asks something of you and you don't really feel like you can say no in that moment, ask if you can pray and think about it over the next 24 hours and get back with them. If it's still a no, you'll most likely have had enough time to think and God will have given you some sort of wording on how to say no to that person in the proper way. As we read through the Gospels, it's obvious that the Pharisees and Jesus had this issue over the Sabbath, something that God had created years and years ago, and they had differing opinions on it. The Pharisees were not very happy that Jesus was working on the Sabbath, but then Jesus confronted the Pharisees on a number of occasions and said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. So I think it's really important as we talk about rest that we figure out what this Sabbath idea is all about. If you're looking to learn more about Sabbath rest, there are two different things I would like to point you toward. In fact, many of the ideas that I'm going to share in this episode come from these two resources. One is The Bible Project. They've done a great, huge series on their podcast, but also they have a couple videos all about the Sabbath. And so if you'd like to learn more about it that way, you can definitely do that. And then also I want to point you toward Alan Fadling's podcast, Unhurried Living. He has episodes 265, 267, 269, and 271, all about rest. So I've gained a lot from those two different resources, but also several others. Two friends of the podcast, James Sabin and Todd Parridge, have another podcast called Youth Ministry Soul Keeper, that I also recommend you checking out. But today, as we talk about the Sabbath, here are some things that I have learned. The Sabbath really connects back to creation in Genesis, where God rested on the seventh day of his creation. Sin separated us from God. And so God instituted this Sabbath as a way of reconnecting with his creation. And then throughout Israel's history, he put certain things in place to continue drawing his people back to him. They had this idea of resting every seven days on the Sabbath, but then there was also seven festivals to connect with God. And then every seven years, they were to let the land rest. And every seven times seven years, there was this year of jubilee where they were supposed to forgive debts and let the land rest even more and just enjoy time with God. Jesus said he is the Lord of the Sabbath, and he used this metaphor that this is the year of the Lord's favor. And then Jesus died on the Sabbath, and he rises on the first day of a new creation. 
a new covenant with God and his people. And as we wait for his return, Jesus invites us to enter into his presence. We can now live in the Sabbath as we wait for the ultimate Sabbath of resting with God for eternity. That's what Sabbath is all about. It's about resting with God, about being with our Creator. And as we are youth pastors, we need to be with our Creator. If we're not being with Jesus like we need to, well, we're missing out. We're not being prepared as much as we need to be to pour into these students. If we're hoping to lead them to God, well, we need to be connecting with God ourselves. And one of the best ways to do that is just to rest and be with God and allow that rest with him to fulfill us, to give us energy, to give us life that we're going to be able to then use to reach more teenagers, more families, and make an impact for him. But why don't we rest? I think it's because we get caught up in the ministry so much. We're doing so much for God because there's so much to be done. And work sometimes has become our God. But rest is a gift from God. And in our rest, we realize our place in light of God. God gives us sleep and he gives us Sabbath where we don't do our regular work. And we're faithful to God when we rest. Resting helps us grow our trust in God because it's then that we trust that God will take care of things because we're not doing it all the time. But looking at the Old Testament and the Chronicles, there's this time where God forces rest on his people. And I think sometimes that happens to us as well. God might allow us to go through a season of desolation or hard times because he wants to make us rest. Even if a time of rest comes that seems like a discipline, God has redemption in mind. The Israelites returned to a land that was ready for them after that time of rest. But some of us do understand that we need to rest, like myself, but we run to the wrong things. We run to this idea of zoning out or numbing ourselves. Some of those things we run to are bad decisions, but some of them aren't inherently bad. They just still lead to numbing and zoning out, not true rest. Things like video games or movies or TV. Things like that don't always lead to true rest. Alan Fadling says that true rest is refreshing and renewing and restoring and refilling, reviving and reconnecting. Rest is a God-given gift of great worth, but so often we run to counterfeit rest. So how do we really rest rather than just zoning out? Well, sometimes we need physical rest. Sometimes we need to just sleep or just lay down for a while and just turn everything off and physically rest. But we also need vocational rest. These are the times where we step away from our ministry careers and we just be with God. We're not thinking about what the next youth group is going to look like or how we're going to form our next sermon illustration, or what game we're going to play, or how many pizzas to order for our next event. We're just stepping away from the ministry and experiencing that Sabbath day. But a lot of times we also need mental rest to just give our brains some time to just be with God and not overwhelm with all the troubles and the anxieties and worries of the world and our ministries and everything else, but to just rest. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So how do we rest with Jesus? It's so much more than just escaping and zoning out. It's allowing Jesus to take our burdens and help us carry them. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. We need to be asking Jesus to come alongside us. And more importantly, we need to be going alongside Jesus. I think it's really important to look at the beginning of Jesus's ministry where he is baptized and God speaks from the heavens. 
I am well pleased with my son. But this is the beginning of his ministry. He hasn't done anything yet. At this point, all we know is that he has grown in wisdom and stature. He's not started out on his ministry. He's not called the disciples yet. He's not healed people. He's not turned water into wine. He's not fed 5,000 people. He's not even preached his first sermon. And yet, God is saying, I'm well pleased. Well, it's not because of all the things that Jesus has accomplished at this point. It's because Jesus is surrendering, and that's what we need to do in our rest, is just surrender to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Regular rest can look like a bunch of different things. Sometimes it needs to look like just taking some time out of each day to be with God. It can also look like one day a week, and you're taking that Sabbath rest. Maybe you take a couple days a quarter to just be with God an extended period of time. I think it's also important that we're taking regular vacations, maybe once a year, maybe once every other year, but try not to go longer than every other year. And something I've been doing over the last couple of years is taking a retreat, a personal retreat every year, where I just get away for a couple of days and just be with God. What's it look like for you? It's up to you and God. One of the things that I like to do is this practice called Lectio Divina. And this is basically meditating on scripture. And my first experience with it was really difficult. I hate to shut off things. I hate to just be in silence. It's something I'm learning more about. It was hard for me in the beginning. But over time, I've learned that I really appreciate it. Just meditating on scripture and being with God and letting that just wash over me. Maybe for you, it's trying some new things like Lectio Divina or maybe some other practices. As I said earlier, I struggled for a long time thinking that I had to do some holy thing when I rested with God. But the truth is that I can also do things that are interesting to me and are exciting to me. Like I can go on a hike with God or weirdly enough, I can read a comic book with God. I've actually done that and maybe... Some of you think that's crazy, but the truth is that it was a great experience. It was weird in the beginning when the first time I did this, but I just kind of sat down and said, okay, God, let's read this together and let's enjoy it. I was able to read it through a lens that I thought that God would honor and also teach me through it as well. The most important thing, though, is that we're just spending time with God and doing things with Him that bring us life and bring us energy rather than simply zoning out and numbing ourselves. We also need to find people who will encourage us in this journey. The other day when I took my personal retreat, I was talking with some friends that the church that I'm serving at right now, and they were all so encouraging to me, saying that it was awesome that I was getting away and just spending time with God. Even if you have no one else to encourage you in this, Let me be someone who does encourage you. We need you in this for the long haul. Your church needs you. The students in your community need you. Your family needs you. And we don't need you to burn out. So make sure that you're working with God and not just for him. Thank you so much for being here for this episode of Student Ministry Connection. I know this episode was a little different than normal, but I really hope it helped you grow as a leader. If you know someone else who might enjoy this podcast, please be sure to share it with them. It's kind of crazy to think that we are coming up on celebrating eight years of this podcast, and we're still here because you keep showing up and sharing it with others. So thank you so much for that. And if you would like to support my ministry with National Network of Youth Ministries, please follow the link in the show notes where you can sign up for our prayer partnership team and also our financial partnership team. I also want to extend a huge thanks to those who have already partnered with me. I appreciate it so much. And if you're interested in joining my team, please follow the link in the show notes or reach out to me. I would love to talk to you more about how you can partner with this ministry. And before we go, I also want to thank G Shades for sponsoring this episode. Check out their website at G-S-H-A-D-E-S dot O-R-G and use the promo code CONNECTION to save $20 off your order. And while you're over there, be sure to check out their blog and also the book from G-Shades founder, Mike Haynes. 
Also, another reminder that if you want to join me at the Orange Conference 2024 and save 10% off your tickets, just use the promo code OC24NNYM10. That's OC24NNYM10, and you'll save 10% off your Orange Conference tickets. As I said earlier, I am really excited about the things we're going to discuss on the podcast this year, so make sure you're subscribed and you're sharing this with others in student ministry. And until next time, be sure to stay connected and may God bless your ministry.